Hello, I'm Sophie Rovner from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the ACS's 256th National Meeting and Exposition in Boston. We're joined today by Dr. Peng Zhang from the University of Cincinnati. He's studying how to weaponize oxygen to kill infections and disease. Dr. Zhang. Thank you, uh, Sophie, uh, and thanks everyone for the opportunity to uh, uh, get to introduce a little bit of what we have been doing in our research group over the last few years. Uh, a little bit of background, so um, the research is we're doing is directly trying to be relevant to antimicrobial drug resistance. And as you probably all well know, uh, this problem has been a hot topic over the last few years, especially uh, since the Obama administration has uh, started and initiated to focus on this big problem. Now, there are two strategies uh, to, to address these uh, drug-resistant problems of bacteria. Uh, one is the common one that you try to invent, re, you know, redefine or uh, refine and uh, discover new generation of antibiotics and just keep just developing Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. And that's what uh, a lot of people are doing, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies are doing, and that's fine. Uh, there is a slightly different strategy, which is to try to develop something that does not use antibiotics to kill bacteria. And that is a more untraditional strategy. And that is the one that our research is trying to uh, be based on. And so uh, we have been doing this over the last few years. Uh, we're trying to develop something that does not involve antibiotics, but the goal is to kill bacteria, to, uh, to treat this. And so the mechanism that we're following is one so-called photodynamic therapy. And this mechanism has been known for years. So that is uh, where established in terms of the uh, mechanism. And it takes three components. Uh, one is light, one is some so-called photo drug, uh, we call it photosensitizer, and the third one is oxygen, and the oxygen is surrounding these uh, photo drugs. Now, photo drugs itself is actually, to be more accurate, it should be photo catalyst, because what they're doing is they, under the illumination of light, they would convert the oxygen into something called reactive oxygen species, and then the re reactive oxygen species would do the killing to the bacteria. Okay, so the photo drug itself is not really a drug, it is a catalyst that would do the tricks. Now, as you know, catalyst, you then you would like this catalyst to be more efficient then because ultimately that's what it determines the efficiency and the efficacy of this treatment. So um, at the well, the state of the art is there are a whole lot of uh, photosensitizers around. Most of them are molecules and dye molecules. And um, there have been a lot of studies try to develop new kind of uh, photosensitizers. And still, there are some limitations. At the molecular level, most of these molecular uh, photosensitizers, their efficiency are moderate, number one. Number two, most of these um, molecules are hydrophilic, so, uh, hydrophobic, so, sorry. So they like to aggregate in water media. So once they aggregate, the efficiency of generating these uh, active, uh, reactive oxygen species decrease dramatically. And for that reason, uh, it is not easy to have high efficiency uh, in terms of uh, photodynamic therapy. So in our case, um, of a few years ago, we started this uh, new um, platform, I would call. We bring these photosensitizers at the molecular level, bring them into nanoparticles. So we kind of concentrate them and loaded them into a bullet, as you can see. And it, in, within this bullet, we introduce either gold or silver nanoparticles, which will be the core of these you know, nanoparticles. And because of the presence of these metals, they have this very uh, dramatic effect of increasing the efficiency of these uh, photo drugs to generating single oxygen. And because of that, it dramatically improves the efficiency of these um, Photos, these nanoparticle photosensitizers, and uh, we have tested uh, 
in various bacteria strains in vitro, we have tested up to six or seven different strains, including some of them are already drug resistant uh, to some antibiotics. And it shows that our nanoparticles can kill these very, very efficiently. In some case, uh, compared to the molecular form and uh, nanoparticle form, the difference in terms of the enhancement is a million times to 100,000 times improvement for the uh, nanoparticle form. So this is uh, quite um, uh, amazing and, and in terms of the material. And uh, we are trying to uh, further develop these uh, into products and ultimately to be used in, uh, in uh, no, that we can use on, on the infections treatments. Thank you very much. If there are questions, please state your name and affiliation before asking the question. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. What applications do you see for, I think you're talking about a gel and a spray. Um, where do you think the first applications will be? Ye yes, that's a, a very uh, relevant question, actually. As you can tell, at this point, you need light and uh, formulation to reach. So the first application we are exploring right now is for skin uh, infections. Or, and then uh, down the road, it could be uh, wound uh, infections or could be burn infections. But we will start from the skin. And where it is very easy to apply the the, the product, and then light is also very easy to reach. And I was just into you said one million to a hundred thousand times improvement. Does that mean um, that it's that much faster, or that you can use that much less product? Or, or? And I would say it. So the way we did the study, we controlled the parameters in terms of the light intensity and the duration of the illumination and then the concentration of the photo drugs. But one drug is in free form, in solution. The other drug is in nanoparticle form, which is kind of, uh, you know, you, you concentrate them into like a bullet. And then we compare these two. And we observe that for the nanoparticle form, we can kill the bacteria from a million, but give it down to zero or to one in that order. If it's uh, for the free from the uh, the drug in in the solution will kill from you know maybe a million to you know one tenth of a million does that have implications for safety and cost of those uh, treatments? yes and we have already started to to do the safety studies um, we have done two types of uh, safety studies one is on the cell a normal cancer cells uh, 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 actually no skin cells. And then after we observe that under the condition of the photodynamic treatment, it doesn't have much effect to the cell, then we move on to use something called skin. Those are viable human skin, it's explant. And we got those samples from a hospital and then we treat it. And uh, under the condition where the bacteria can be killed, there is no uh, toxicity to that. Now, down the road, I understand we, have, we need to do more on, on the live animals, not just the, the experience. So. And also, um, does it work? I mean, how broad spectrum is um, other nanoparticles? Do they work on gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria? Right. So as I mentioned, we have tested six to seven um, bacteria now, including three of them uh, gram-positive, three of them gram-negative, and then two of them are uh, drug-resistant. So we, we try MRSA, and it works fine. We try an, another nasty uh, bacteria called Acinobacter bobini, uh, which is very relevant to military's interest. And it is a drug-resistant strain, and we can cure them in that manner very efficiently. Thank you. Bela uh, Buslig, ACS. These nanoparticles, uh, at, uh, what particular uh, preference is there for wavelength? Uh, okay, that's a very good question, and I can probably uh, touch base on that. If you are using the molecular photo drugs, then it is quite important to find a wavelength that will match 
uh, the absorbance for those um, the photosensitizers. Now, in our case, we observed that once we introduce the either the gold or silver nanoparticles into this nano bullet, uh, the requirement for this match is not that strict. So uh, if we are using a maximum, uh, the, the, the most uh, overlapping uh, wavelengths, say that's 100%, we can use um, something that is far away from that and you can get 60 to 70% of efficiency compared to the, the most overlapping uh, wavelengths. But if you are just working with the photo drug in solution, it's like going from 100 to 1. So now we are going from 100 to 60 to 70 percent. And so that actually make it very interesting because now we don't have to use a very specific light source for any given uh, photo drugs. We can use a more general light source. You can use a white light, uh, which is what we started when we first used these, uh, uh, do this experiment. We, we use a white light. Uh, then in the end, we switch to an LED. And the reason is not because LED is, is, is more efficient. Instead, the white light generates quite some heat. And we want to reduce the heat. So now we are using an LED that doesn't generate much heat at so, all. So in other words, uh, the, the range is somewhere in the It's visible. visible. It's visible. It has to be visible to be useful. Well, yeah. the reason I'm asking is because uh, there are photosensitizers, of course, they, they probably do not depend on uh, reactive oxygen, right. like the Sorolens, the, uh, they're, right. they're UV uh, sensitizers, right. really, uh, really. And I was just wondering if anything of that sort would, would be applicable. Yeah, actually, we try to avoid the UV because UV light would have some you know, toxicity to skin. Uh, so we, we want to move away as, as far into the red as possible, actually. Now, one uh, last question on, uh, on the administration of the, uh, of the nanoparticles material. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, these, these infections are, at least at the beginning, fairly localized, so you could essentially inject in the area but then, uh, then if it's it's a f little more spread uh, where it where it's most dangerous, uh, how do how do you administer enough material to spread around? Uh, well, at this point, we are targeting uh, localized and skin, you know, infections. So it's probably not the whole body treatment. But you know, uh, we are thinking of either spray or some gel form or some ointment where you can apply to the site of the infection and then you turn on the LED light, illuminate for 10, 20 minutes, and that will be it. Um, so that's, uh, but you are right, maybe when we get to that point, we will think about how to make well, it. I, I, I hope we'll never get to those kind of points, but, <laughs> uh, but you know, it would be nice if, if you just kind of smear it on yourself and then, uh, and then, then go out in the sun and, and be happy afterwards, but uh, you know, just, it, I just had to ask the question because usually people people start worrying about an infection when it spreads a little too far, and, and so you are right on the target. And there are different factors that we need to consider. Actually, we don't want to make it so that the sunlight is enough to do this because then then you have to be protected after you have this treatment because then you cannot walk out, right? Uh, so we still want it, uh, the requirement so that the, you still need an LED, you know, brighter than the sun to be effective sure. so that you, you don't have to worry too much after the treatment. You can walk out, you know. You just wash away the, and then there may be some residue, but you can be free to walk out into the sun. Thank you very much. <laughs> Would bacteria become resistant to this treatment? And that is something that has been actively studied in the uh, community. And uh, at this point, based on what I have read about, uh, it looks like there's no resistance reported yet. And the, the, the belief is that um, because these um, reactive oxygen species attack multiple targets of the bacteria, and so bacteria is probably not um, able to develop defense so quickly. It would attack the membrane, lipid, protein, you know, DNA, you know, 
So it's probably uh, not uh, not easy for bacteria to develop the resistance, uh, resistance. But you know, it's an ongoing uh, field of study. Laura Cassidy, ACS. Um, do you think this approach could be used to disinfect surfaces, like in hospitals? That is a question that I got asked m many times. Um, in principle, yes, uh, but from a practical standpoint, it may not be very uh, convenient because then you need a light source that is large enough to cover everywhere. Um, so I think uh, from a com commercial standpoint, I, I wouldn't say that would be the market I'm targeting to. <laughs> Katie Cottingham, ACS. So I was wondering, could this be used for other conditions? I think then the release date, you mentioned something about cancer? Uh, yes, that's very true. So this type of treatment actually uh, can be used for multiple things, um, depends on the degree of development. So at this point, it looks like for the bacteria is the best developed one. For the cancer treatment, there have been a lot of reports, and we are just thinking of doing that as well. Um, there are limitations. First of all, for cancer treatment, you need to de deliver the photo drug to the cancer site, and then you need to deliver the light to the cancer site. Now, if it's on the skin, then that's easy. So this kind of treatment has been used for skin cancer treatment, and, and that, that's fine. But for the, those that are deep tissue cancers, it may not be that easy, right? So that is, that is a challenge. Now, for other things, uh, we recently report uh, uh, in a, a paper that was just uh, published uh, this past month. Uh, we are able to use the same type of treatment f uh, for fungus, uh, which is slightly different than bacteria. Now, fungus is, uh, is a little bit more difficult to kill because of their membrane structure. But we show that they are effective, although it's not as effective as bacteria. The requirements are a little bit harsher. You need to eliminate uh, with a much longer period of light, and then um, you need to, you know, uh, in, you know, introduce the photo drug with the fungus for a certain period of time, maybe 10, 20 minutes before you turn on the light and illuminate it. In the case of bacteria, you don't have to do that. You just mix them, and then immediately you illuminate the light. Less than 10 minutes, they are, they are, they are cured. All right, thank you very much. The archived version of this session will be soon posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live underscore Boston 2018. Please join us for our next press conference at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you.